Hey everybody, it's Scott again. Hope everyone's having a good Wednesday. Let's kick a prayer. Lord Jesus, please forgive us for our sins. Please help us keep the faith that you are coming soon with God's kingdom and God's judgment. Help us prepare. Help us carry your message before the great tribulation. We ask in your name. Amen. All right, guys. Um, I decided to make another Ebola uh, podcast, and this one's called Ebola. Are you prepared? As if you're watching the news, whether it's alternative news, which I follow, and all the sites I follow in the description box below, and mainstream media news, really going to give you a whole lot. Um, Ebola is kind of taking front seat, and you know it's just been within the past probably seven to ten days that uh, the CDC and the WHO. World Health Organization, WHO, finally came clean and says, yeah, I think we may have a problem. And we don't know for sure exactly how far Ebola has spread or even can begin to estimate the number of infected people. Okay, and then let's put that information on top of we are flying several, several confirmed Ebola victims into this country and taking them to standard hospitals. And Germany's received some, some other countries. So I don't think the, the WHO and the governments are playing this smart or really initially were taking this very seriously. This is a bad little virus or bug or whatever you want to call it. It's bad. And the survivability rate from what the experts say it's not good. And it's a, from also, from what I understand, I've read some reports that it is just an agonizing way to die. I say they put it right up there, if not worse than dying of rabies, being infected with rabies. And so ask yourself, you know, let's look at it this, this way. Is this just more false flag media hype to distract us, or do we take it? at face value and see this as a global threat that it truly is. So it's your call. Um, then the other thing, President O has decided he's just going to ship off 3,000 troops down there to assist in setting up makeshift hospitals and, 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 and assist with trying to contain Ebola. I think we're, I honestly think we're past the point of containment. I think it's out. And it's only a matter of time before it truly rears its ugly head. And, you know, I appreciate that our current administration wants to send help because that's what America's done, you know, since World War I. Is we can out and we help people in crisis. And, 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 and so I appreciate that. But I watched a report on uh, the PBS NewsHour last night. One of the analysts there was saying that it's this – 3,000 troops and sending down 100,000 home emergency Ebola kits for these people down there is a little too late. And I think I'm going to agree with these guys. But nevertheless, we as Americans, especially Christians, no matter what, in adversity, we want to help others because that's what our Savior wants us to do. But I just think it's damn risky. You know, this analyst on the PBS NewsHour last night uh, had stated that this is, even from a logistics standpoint, this is something that would take weeks to orchestrate, plan before the first move is made. And I guess we're going to bypass all that and just jump down there. And I'm just beginning to wonder uh, how well equipped these 3,000 foot soldiers we're shipping down are going to be with their, their biohazard gear. You know, are we just going to throw them down there with the basic um, safety gear and and hope for the best? So I don't know. Only time will tell. And this is the other thing, you know, how prepared are you? You know, I was listening to Hummingbird 027, a broadcast of hers here on YouTube a couple of days ago. And she's also, you know, a prepper and a devout Christian. And she talks about how prepared are you? You know, let's say if this all of a sudden runs rampant in this country, we get put under some kind of a medical quarantine where we can't leave our house. 
And, you know, could you make it a month? Could you make it two weeks without leaving your house with food, water, and medicine? Could you make it five days? You know, how prepared would you be? So now let's take three steps back and look at the big picture. <clears throat> we have the possibility of a nasty uh, solar flare knocking us offline. We've got the threat of an EMP attack. We've got a multitude of ISIS threats that they're going to start tearing up all kinds of things in this country. Well, uh, we're looking at the possibility of a super volcano blowing a fuse, spewing the atmosphere with enough ash to put us into a very quick nuclear winter. We've got the threat of earthquakes. Lord knows that the uh, earthquake activity around the planet has uh, has increased, you know, tenfold. Go to IntelliCast.com. Well, the link's in the description box below. And just watch that on a daily basis. So now, let's get back to being prepared. Um, are you prepared? HHS readies U.S. hospitals for Ebola. I'm actually just kind of scanning the uh, news headlines, headlines on Infowars.com. It's like, okay, I guess we're just going to bring people into standard hospitals and do makeshift quarantines and hope for the best. It's almost as though this is planned. You know, part of this new world order they keep talking about. That's usher out, the, destroy the old, and out of all the chaos, bring forth new order. I don't know. It, uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a conspiracy theory person by any means, but I do believe in the prophecies in the book of Revelation, and it does talk about the New World Order. So anyway, also, I listened on truenews.com on Monday, September 15th. I listened to Rick Wilde's broadcast. He had Dr. Jonas Schmidt uh, Chancet uh, from Germany was on there. And this guy's very knowledgeable about uh, diseases and stuff like, you know, typhoid, bubonic, um, what is it, the swine flu, the bird flu. And he was talking about, you know, self-protection. And he made the comment um, in this uh, interview that, oh, yeah, you got to have, you know, level three uh, <clears throat> biohazmat protection to, to totally protect yourself from Ebola, like, okay, you know, if you're going to be, you know, dealing in direct contact with um, people that are infected, it's like, well, okay, you know, I just want to build some basic protection. So I got online, Googled around, looked at these level three bio suits, and the cheapest one I could find was like $278. And some of these bio suits, all the way up to the military CDC grade of like three thousand dollars. I thought, okay, I can't afford that. So I did more research, more research, and I'm gonna uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna build a couple of biohazard uh, emergency kits because you know you've heard me talk about you know respirators, N95 respirators, gas masks with uh, the P100 uh, cartridges. The other thing this guy, uh, doctor from Germany, said is like, well, he goes, N95 uh, respirator dust mask, or just, you know, you don't wear those when you get around Ebola patients. Okay, we won't. But I tell you what, if you're trying to scramble and get home and having to deal with a little bit of the public under the suspicion of Ebola as present, you know, and an N95 will, will help. You know, I did some more research. If you're going to be working in a hospital in confined quarters with an Ebola patient, then no, uh, <laughs> N95 dust mask won't work. So what I'm going to do is build some bio kits based off of research. And because most of us, if not all of us here on YouTube, we're working class people. We buy exactly what we can afford. So as always, I'm going to do extensive research and see about you know putting together maybe a kit for under $300 that would be a good protection. So that's my two cents on that. I know I'm kind of rambling. It's just this, this has been weighing very heavily on my mind the last couple of days. So, you know, people get prepared, you know, unplug from the matrix, so to speak, poke your head out, take a look at what's going on in the world today. There's so many things that are on the crespice of just snapping and unraveling. And my concern as we approach the end times is 
we'll have several of these things unravel at once, which will drive the chaos, which will drive the panic, which will drive the fear, which will drive the run on the stores, disrupt distribution. You know, there's just a lot of things. So ask yourself, you know, do I want to risk my life out there fighting hundreds of people at grocery stores, Walmart, Smith's, Albertsons, trying to get two or three days worth of food, or do I want to be smart and each week, each payday, buy a little extra, put it to the house. So it's up to you. But with that being said, and you also might want to think about some kind of a home defense. You know, it's going to be one thing to be out there you know, having to fight other people for basic supplies to make, you know, food, water, basic medicines, medical supplies. And because uh, people are going to panic and you, you're going to be absolutely amazed at the people, friends, family, co-workers that seem calm-mannered, easy to get along with, law-abiding citizens, but put enough fear in them that they're not going to have food to feed themselves or their children. And you're going to see people do some pretty asinine things. And so you might want to consider based off your geographic area family members children whatever think about some kind of a home defense protect yourself and um all right guys what's well, going to be it i gotta go do some stuff do some more research so you know thanks for listening you know just be safe stay aware most importantly be prepared i'm out ciao